Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Band Practice. I'm Emma. And I'm Madison. And today we're going to be doing a little deep dive on our human design charts. Um, This is something that's new to me. I know you have kind of looked into it in the past, but we don't have like a ton of background knowledge on it. So we're kind of just going to be learning as we go and like going through our charts with you guys. And maybe you guys could look up your charts and, you know, see if we're similar or different. I don't know. Um, But we're going to learn about ourselves today and it's going to be fun. I love learning about myself. Same. As if I'm not me. But I just love any sort of like personality quiz or just like astrology, like anything that I'm like, oh, yes, I feel like they get me then. I don't know. I just love it. Mm -hmm. Especially I feel like for our girlies in their early mid 20s, it's like, do we even really know who we are? We don't. We are ourselves. But anything I can look outward to for like an explanation of why I am the way I am. um, Love it. I guess we can g- dive into it later, but yeah, that's just a little sneak yeah. peek. Yeah, a little sneak peek. We have to chat first. You guys know how it goes. Yeah, you know the drill. <laughs> um, it, it's weird though because we saw each other just a few days ago. Just a few days ago, I I left Denver. Um, Feels like so a lifetime guess, ago. It really, it really does. I like went and stayed with my boyfriend though for the few days after that so I'm actually home for the first time today it's been over a week and I'm like just frazzled but I, it's important I need to like get into my routine and and mm-hmm. everything yeah sometimes I kind of like getting out of my routine as messed up as it sounds to get back into it because then it's also like more motivating yeah. or like a fresh start it feels like it is the freshest of starts mm-hmm. we went to the grocery store Laura and I and I spent like over a hundred dollars on groceries and I was like I haven't spent that much on groceries in so long because I'm only ever shopping for myself but Mm -hmm. it just felt good to like get everything you know when like your butter gets old like it's just time to get like everything new yeah things that like you only have to buy once in a while you just buy them new get a fresh start love it it's so good so after grocery shopping we decided to like clean out the fridge because it's been pretty stinky like it smells like somewhat like rotting fish essentially mm. which as you can imagine is just like the best smell ever mm, um super pleasant and so, and appetizing <laughs> exactly <laughs> so yeah it really makes you excited to like cook your meal when you like all of your ingredients smell like that um yeah so we like just <laughs> got a bunch of like old towels and like wiped it up so it was also this issue where everything in our fridge froze for a while and it was like on the lowest setting and it just wouldn't stop freezing Mm -hmm. so we had to like turn it off for like 10 minutes turn it back on and like now everything's fine but there was just like melted like brown ice on the bottom of the fridge so whatever that was I think was the culprit but (laughs) Yeah. Um. So that was like my little Sunday reset for, for the day. Um, <laughs> you should have filmed it. Put some cute it. music. <laughs> no, literally. Can you imagine? No, actually, Laura did that. Bless her heart. Um. So yeah, that was fun today. I don't even remember why I was telling the story, but there you go. <laughs> I don't. I don't remember either. But hey, it was I a good don't one. know. Thank you. Thank now you for you sharing. Know. Make sure. You- <laughs> Thank you. Make sure y'all keep your fridges clean. Oh, I also meant to ask you, Laura and I are interested in doing those little can um, thing. I don't even know what you uh-huh. would call it, like the soda can holders that you have Dispensary in your fridge. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So if you could link us. Yeah. Amazon. I'll, I'll link it down below. It yeah, really is so good. It feels like you're fund. like, no, literally, it feels like you're like at the store when you grab one and then the yes. next one slides up. You're like, Oof. yeah, we are really interested. <laughs> okay okay i'll send you the link other than that though you've been having a wonderful time without me <laughs> honestly i've been really irritable ever since and <laughs> i am on my period so but i also think i'm just like having withdrawals from you mm, um i had to get, go to a baseball game last night it was actually more fun than i anticipated um but yeah we won go diamondbacks i don't i don't ever know mm-hmm. um Woohoo! It was Star Wars night, and so like a lot of people were dressed up. It was kind of cute. Oh, that's um, fun. don't know. I've just been wa- you know staying up to date on Love Island. That's kind of it. Fun, fun. I thought uh, about yeah, watching absolutely. Love Island. Um, Emma caught me up to speed when she was here, and then she wanted to watch the last episode, but I was doing something, and I was like, "Oh, you can watch it because I'm not going to continue to watch it after you leave." And she was like, "I think she was a little offended," but I did think about was- it the other day. I was like. No, I do kind of miss it. 
That was fun. It is fun. It's just like, like and an I'm easy kind of wondering around. like who's kicked off, like who's still there. Yeah. Like I need to be up to date. You have got to check out the Berkey, Carmen, and Victor drama. Oh, oh my gosh. I know. I need to. It's crazy. You do. I feel like so Berkey you better tune will... in. I, I will. I feel like Bergie's going to really like make a spin and be the villain. Like I feel like he's going to be stealing <laughs> everyone's bitch. <laughs> no, I feel like the issue with Bergie, oh, bless his heart, is he like lacks like the social skills and like relationships yeah. and just like I think just in general. So like I think he low key will like offend some of the guys without meaning mm-hmm. to because he's just like going to talk to whoever girl he wants to talk to because he thinks he mm-hmm. just can't. Yeah, he has, like, no social boundaries. Like, even I remember Mm -hmm. a couple episodes back, he was like, I have the most kisses here. Like, I've kissed five girls. And then all the guys were like, okay, so you kissed my girl. Like, literally. (laughs) No, I know. Oh, God. It's kind of, it's cringe. But I think he's going to eventually have to, like, learn the hard way of, like, what you can or cannot do and like even with Carmen he's saying like yeah like I really like you because you know you want the same amount of kids and it's like you can't tell a girl that's why you like her when you like Mm -hmm. just met (laughs) yeah first of all like just a logistical reason like I want this and you want this and that's why I like you and then the fact that it's kids and they met like two days ago I'm like Bertie come on (laughs) pull pull it together (laughs) pull it together I know love him though i'm i'm excited to see his character arc because i f- i really do feel like it could take a turn i think everybody I could know. turn on him and i think Can't he's wait. gonna be on the show for a long time so i definitely think we're gonna watch some serious growth yeah he's gonna come okay. off the island a new man shout for out Bergy. i stand with Bergy and none of the other like guys six. <laughs> <laughs> please <laughs> oh he do be having well, a higher body count than me, but anyways. Um. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, what have you been up to? <laughs> I've been good. Um, I've been emotional and, you know, we'll get into mm. that later in my chart, um, but not in a bad way. I think just becoming a mother um, has really, right. like, opened the floodgates. Like, I... Went to go pick up groceries the other day. Keep in mind, I said pick up as in order pick up, like drive up and pick them up. I I didn't even go in the store. So it was like a 15 minute ordeal max. And by the time I got home, I was sobbing because I was just thinking about how proud proud I am of Indy because he's just been doing so good. And I just started crying because I'm just like a proud mother. Or like just before we started recording, I sent Ben a TikTok and it was a little mini weenie and they had like a little baby camera on the crate when they were both at work or whatever and she showed like the little weenie sleeping in his crate and then they were texting back and forth and they're like oh my gosh oh my gosh he's in his crate like they were so happy and I was like that's gonna be us and I just started crying so I know. yeah I've been um just a new mother the hormones are raging yeah, um for sure it's it's his one week anniversary of please every time I see a picture of him like my heart physically aches like I miss him so much. I can just like feel myself like giving him kisses on his little forehead and his ears. And I just Mm -hmm. like, I cannot, I cannot handle it. Like I want to see everything of him, but then it also is so painful. Uh (laughs) Uh-huh. Well, you see him soon. He misses auntie. Yeah. He misses his auntie so good. Oh. I think it was really good that you guys were here though too, because just like for his development to get him used to new people. Yeah. Because even now, like, I feel like because he was around you guys and you guys were holding him, like, he went to the vet and the vet held him and he wasn't scared. Or, like, today we took him to the farmer's market and I just carried him because he can't get down and walk around yet because he's not done with his vaccinations. But people were, like, coming up to him and we're like, oh, and he was doing so good. He, like, didn't bark at anyone or anything. He's a really Mm. good boy. He is a good boy. I'm so proud of him. I'm like, and so this whole episode is just going to be me talking about him. (laughs) And it should be. (laughs) (laughs) Well, what are you drinking? Um, Anything fun? Nothing super fun. I just have some water with um, watermelon lemonade Mio and a little bit of Mm. True Lime. So I guess it's a fun water, but I've just, I think I've been really dehydrated. So I'm just trying to 
keep it keep chugging down and it's just easier when it's fruity you know Mm-hmm. Ha- did you ever end up on the side of tiktok that was like water recipes yes <laughs> yeah <laughs> there are some like n- like I-, I can't i don't know like birthday cake water like i was literally gonna say stuff. birthday cake yeah, yeah. they're like sugar free i am intrigued <laughs> uh-huh 10 pumps of sugar-free birthday cake four pumps of sugar-free caramel <laughs> like in the water i, I mean, know hey don't don't knock until you try it yeah. but yeah they have all the packets and all the syrups though it's crazy they have like a whole coffee shop yeah. for their water it's a whole thing if you haven't um, seen it look it well, up yeah i mean if if that's what it takes you know mm-hmm. i'm no hater i love a little flavored water yeah but sometimes but- normal water just hits differently but I know. I feel like after, because I will sometimes put like a little packet or even like liquid IV or like anything that makes it flavored. I'll like be drinking that all day. And then by the end of the day, I'm like the things I would do for just an ice cold plain water. Yeah. Like cut the bullshit. Give me the water. Mm -hmm. So it's a balance. It is. (laughs) Anyways, I don't know why I'm so chatty now. I've she been locked is, in the I house like, with this I have puppy few, for like, I have like five other days. things I want to say. I don't even want to move on yet. I, I didn't know. even tell y'all I got a pedicure this morning. Ooh, fun. Yes, professional. It was so funny though because so Laura and I went together and we actually tend to do our own like gel pedicures at home. I have like a kit and everything. Mm-hmm. And when the nail tech started doing Laura, she's like, "You do yours yourself?" <laughs> like and she was just kind of like laughing at Laura's paint job. It was so funny. <laughs> they are so savage every time. I they got a, it was they like, damn. Like, got her. Oh, that's funny. I but also yeah. do my own toes, but I feel like mm-hmm. every once in a while you have to go and just like yeah. get them really like, done. I had to do like the callus removal. I was like, I just really need someone to like get in there, get the gunk off, give me a little massage, a little scrub. Mm -hmm. and i just feel brand new i got like a baby pink because i was just feeling i wanted to channel my inner barbie so cute cute i love that thank you Mm -hmm. if anybody with a foot fetish is listening they are just screaming at this segment literally i'm like do you guys want to (laughs) see have you still been um saying barbie and stuff or has it died down because i'm still saying it um still saying it i was saying it at the baseball game last night so Hi, if, Barbie. If you guys haven't seen Barbie, you have to because yes, you just have to. Hi, Barbie. It changed my life as a woman. It really did. I think I'm throughout motherhood and seeing the Barbie movie in the same week. I'm just feeling so feminine and womanly. Like I am a woman, right? It's crazy. Also, like um, throwback to like the last episode when I was talking about how I wanted to um, like, just feel better in my body. Mm -hmm. I've, like, actually just been, like, hyping myself up every time I look in the mirror, like, whether I feel it or not. And I don't know. I just – I really feel like gorgeous woman. Like, that's just the feeling. That's the energy. Yay. That's so cute. I'm so happy for you. Thanks. I am woman. I am (laughs) fair. I don't even know the words. I am sexy. I am divine. I'm divine. (laughs) (laughs) That's you in the mirror every day. No, I love that. Thank you. So exciting. Making big moves with my manifestations. So mm-hmm. I've been reading it every day. Um, I booked the thing for my birthday. So, you know, things are things are happening. Mm-hmm. Things are happening. I did a little uh, yeah. meditation in the bath last night for the first time in a while. Ah, uh, nice. Life changing. You gotta yeah. do it. I, I'm gonna do one tonight in the I I have a big, big bath plans tonight. Okay, big big bath plans on the way. You guys big aren't ready plans. for these big bath plans. I'm whipping plans. out. No, you're not ready. I'm whipping out my um facial steamer. Ooh, and I'm gonna do like face mask. That. I'm gonna do everything. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> Ped- pedicure day, big bath day. Pedi- this is just this is the I'm day for you. you. Yeah, this is my day to like come back to reality in a gentle way. <laughs> Before work tomorrow. Shh, let's not talk about that. <laughs> Uh, well sounds fun sounds like things yeah. have been good um i had a little bit of separation anxiety the first day that you left and every day since then it's been a little bit better but um yeah i'll see I'm you really for your birthday so that. yeah yes. you abandoned me but it's fine I'll- 
I'll have trauma Please, for, you aban- for you years to come. Me first. Is th- you mm. abandon me first is the thing. So. Okay. You got me there. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, did we even talk? What are you drinking? Did we go there? Oh, no. Um, I looked at We're it. We're so many tangents today. <laughs> I know. I was going to say coffee? coffee just by looking at it. No, sir. It's a dirty oh. Diet Coke. <gasps> and by dirty, I don't oh. mean a shot. By dirty, I don't mean alcohol. I don't mean espresso. I mean oat milk. Oh, with a little bit of true lime. <laughs> Yum. Yeah. Ooh, okay. A little, a little creamer that moment. Because I haven't done that in a long time. Remember when everybody was doing that? Yeah. Yeah. It's nice. Laura a little said treat. she saw this. That is a delicious treat. She saw this like cocktail recipe where it's like Diet Coke, a shot of espresso, like lime, and then vodka. Mm. I was like, oh. I'd Could be, be interesting. Intrigued. And maybe pro- maybe a creamer or something. I don't really remember, but yeah. Actually, that seems like it might be good. It seems like a balance I know. of a lot of you got the acidity from the lime, right. you got the bitter from the espresso, the sweet from the coke, mm-hmm. the alcohol from the vodka. It could be could be good. Could be magic. Yeah. Um, well, I say we get into this because I say we yeah. It's been We're a like while. halfway through a normal episode. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So human design. Um, I actually first heard this in like a TikTok. I don't know if yours is the same. That's same. where I hear yeah. everything. Of course. Um, <laughs> duh. If you haven't heard of it, basically it's like um, they describe it as like a system that gives you a detailed blueprint of how your energy is designed, how you are unique and what your gifts are. And it's similar to astrology where it uses like the exact time, date and place of birth for you. But it also like uses your like identifies your chakras and uses that to create what they call a body graph. And that then also explains like, I, I don't know, like how your energy interacts with like the world i guess would be a good way to explain it so it's similar to astrology but not necessarily the same thing but that's probably the most similar thing i think out of all of the personality type stuff yeah that was you were so well spoken that was like a really good explanation um yeah i heard of this like i don't know i think i've heard it in passing kind of for like i don't know a couple years or something i feel like i've known what it was for a while but i never like looked into it it always piqued my interest and i was like curious about it but i never actually looked mine up until literally Mm -hmm. yesterday um so it was interesting to look into everything when you're filling out your information you can do your own chart online like i just typed in human design chart i'm pretty sure and it comes up with like websites that you can do it on um yeah you just type in like your time of birth place of birth, date of birth, just like you would if you were logging into like CoStar or something. So I was kind of confused. I was like, is this astrology? Like, what are we even talking about? But like you said, it's like it uses the same information, but just applies it in a different way. So it doesn't have anything to Mm -hmm. do with like the planets and the stars and how they relate to you. It's about like your own personal, like you said, whatever they call it, um, body graph and your chakras and all of that. Um, but I would love to like actually go to somebody. You can do this all on your own, like I said, but there's also people that can like read your chart for you and like really deep mm-hmm. dive into it. And there's certain stuff that I didn't really understand, like um Same. the incarnation cross and stuff. Right. And there's like um there's like basically breaks within your body graph and where your break is determines like different things about you. And so I know that I do have a break, but I don't know where it is. And I feel like that could be very telling. So like, I don't know, it would be interesting to go to somebody and actually have them explain this all to you because I feel like I got like the basics, but I know there's more to learn. Should we just dive into our own charts? Let's just do it. Can we, can you start? And then I'll kind of like jump in with like what mine is for each thing. I feel like you might understand things better than I do. Sure. Um, my other it computer might be stupid, died, guys. So oh, let me, let me pull it up on my phone. <laughs> guys, three of my computers have died now. So oh, literally. we're really, we're, sh- we're struggling today. It's a struggle. Um, it always is. Um, okay. So the first thing that's kind of, I would say, in comparison is like your sun sign like it's like your main part of your human Mm -hmm. design is your type um i think there's four different types mine is the manifesting generator um emma you are 
just, just a generator. generator. Yeah. Yeah. So there's like a uh, mm, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, but uh yeah, there's like a couple different ones that you can be. And this one I resonated a lot with. Honestly, as I was going through a lot of this, I was like, wait, how does this know who I am? Like this is very, very true. But right. I basically looked into it and manifesting generators are pretty similar to generators, but just to me it sounds like a little bit more chaotic. Like it said we're multi-passionate. Like there was like a very big emphasis on like we have a lot of energy that goes a lot of different places. Like we're not somebody to just focus on one task or one hobby or one interest. Like we always have 20 tabs open in our brain at all times, which Mm -hmm. is me. Um, Also it said that manifesting generators are ruled by the sacral center. I think is how you say it, but it basically just means your gut, like your gut instincts. So everything is either like an immediate yes or an immediate no which is so me like if I don't want to do something it's an immediate no and I'm not going to do it and if I do want to do something I'm just like so excited about it and so hyped on it like right away so that seemed like I resonated with that a lot and it also said like we feel the most happy when we're active and productive and when we are working towards a goal like actively um which I thought was interesting because I know I'm that way but for some reason my instinct is to not be that way like I don't always want to be the most productive and I do like procrastinate on certain things but I do know that when I am like super actively working towards a goal that's when I'm my best self so that was like a good reminder for me and lastly we basically just have a really big excess of physical energy that we should like transfer into like I said our hobbies interests goals and always be working mm-hmm. towards something because if not, I think we can feel like overwhelmed and kind of scatterbrained just because we have like so much pent up energy. I say I as like I'm that. rambling. Do you feel like <laughs> literally? Do you feel? I was gonna say. I feel like that makes sense. No. Yeah. No. <laughs> How this, do you like, feel about that? It absolutely made sense to me. Like. Yeah. I looked a little bit into yours, and I think mm-hmm. it makes a lot of sense for both of us. But then there was like a missing part that when I looked into the manifesting generator, I was like, oh, okay. Yeah. That's definitely, definitely me. Yeah. Well, mine is a generator. And I think I saw somewhere that it's like the most popular one, which unfortunately made me like, oh gosh. Mine said is, I think mine's the second most popular is 30%. And I was like, like, whatever. Right. I'm like, boo. (laughs) Um, No, but... (laughs) Um, so I'll explain, I'll read kind of like what the little excerpt was for a generator. They call this the life force, people who are here to lift the energy of the world. So pure life force in motion. These people have an attracting aura and a juiciness to their energy. When they are doing what they love, people can't get enough of them. They're also the natural hustlers and doers of society. Something about this kind of like intimidated me. I was like, wait, is that? I don't know that I'm like a doer of society. Like, I feel like I don't do much. Like, I just like, I don't know that I'm generating much, but like a life force. I feel like I don't got a lot of life in me, but um, <laughs> not to like dog on myself, but I don't know. I just feel like maybe this is more of like how other people might perceive me. I'm not sure. I just, I think I got get stuck in this idea that I'm like, shy quiet and just like small in the world but I do think I have like desires that are just like bigger than myself and like I've just always dreamt bigger than I don't know what felt like was usual for people Mm -hmm. around me so I don't know I like the I like the juiciness to my energy I Mm -hmm. definitely think my energy is juicy just like that ass (laughs) exactly and you get it And I liked the, like, what they're doing. When they're doing what they love, people, like, can't get enough of them. I feel like that is true. I definitely think my mood is very dependent on, like, whether I feel like I'm, like, on my right track or not. That's probably Mm -hmm. everyone. But, like, if I'm on my manifesting game, like, I just feel like I'm just more of a magnetic person. And I just, like, I don't know when I'm have my routine and I'm sticking to it and I'm like reaching my goals. I'm just obviously like a better person to be around. But I think you're having a, maybe a little bit of imposter syndrome with it. But that's right. honestly how I 
how I see you. Like I'd say that's wow. how I would describe you. Okay. Um, yeah, I think you're just like a go getter. You're always doing like good, you know. Like you're always working towards that's your goals so nice. and like accomplishing yeah. things. And even when I tell you to like quit your job, you're like, no, I can do it. Like I can stick it out. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. And I also think I was gonna say I feel like that your type is you at your best so that's maybe why we don't identify it with it fully all the time because i feel right. like it also ties back into uh where is it mm. oh i feel like it also um ties back into your not self theme which we'll get back into right. later. but that's basically like the emotions that you feel when you're not on your correct path um so that's like i feel like our lower version of ourselves, and our type is like our highest version of ourself mm. okay I like but that. what do I know? I don't sense. know. That's just like the vibe <laughs> that I, I was getting. <laughs> um, okay. The next aspect of your chart, I guess, is your strategy. Um, I think we both had responding, right? That's yeah. yours as well. Mm -hmm. At first glance, I thought it was kind of like responding, like speaking with other people about decisions and like working as a team. I don't know. That's like the vibe that I was first getting. But then as I read through it, it was saying like basically – what we're all taught when we're younger is to like really think about our decisions and weigh the pros and cons and like ask your friends, ask your family for their opinion or to weigh in on things. But for those who their strategy is responding, we should actually do the opposite as silly as that sounds. Oh. But I think it ties back into like um, we're ruled by our sacral, whatever our gut and our gut instincts. Right. So like at the end of the day, we really know best. Like we don't have to second guess ourselves and refer to other people or like lose sleep over it like normally the thing that we first feel is going to be the best for us and it even yeah. I was reading like some stuff and it said this might mean like going against societal expectations or making decisions that seem illogical to other people like at the end of the day us generators and us manifesting generators we're going to make it happen anyways so like even if it doesn't make sense to other Period. people as long as it feels good to us and feels like the right gut instinct like that's the right path for us okay which is reassuring i think it is for sure any thoughts no i kind of covered it yeah I, what yeah. she said <laughs> <laughs> uh the next room we also got the same thing so for authority which is like the way you make decisions we both got emotional so we you know base our decisions on things that we feel i think this one's like pretty self-explanatory but i'll mm -hmm. explain I'll, I'll like read what they say so about 47 percent of the population falls into this type of solar plexus authority uh the solar plexus operates in a wave that in a wave that is always moving jesus as this type <laughs> rides their emotional wave and experiences all of its nuances they pick up information over time when they come to a place of clarity or a little or no nervousness in the body they can make their decision at that point if this is you, you'll always get the better deal for yourself when you wait. Take time to sleep on it and allow yourself to experience the full spectrum of emotional wave before making decisions. I feel like this is 100% us, especially the like sleep on it thing. I feel like we are both people that like to process things before we like react or like make decisions. Um, especially like, I don't know, even in like conflict, like we're kind of just like waiters. And I find that even with work, like, I'm not someone that can just like come up with ideas for something or like I just need time to like sit on things to figure out how I feel. Yeah, I feel the same way. And I think it's ironic because it kind of goes against our uh, strategy of responding of like right. going going with our gut. This one says to like, okay, well, maybe don't always do that. Like take time to think about it. But I think it also mm -hmm. ties into like what I was reading was saying we're always on an emotional wave. Like some days we're up, some days we're down just for no reason at all. Like we're just very yeah. emotionally dysregulated, I guess, <laughs> because we're just different every day. Like that's just how we are. Yeah. And so, yeah, I think there's like two sides to the story and we have to use different things for different situations. Like the things that I was reading were like, if you get an opportunity don't say yes to it right away because you're on that emotional wave. Like you might be so excited about the opportunity at first, but then you're going to wake up the next morning and be like, I don't want to do that. Like, oh shit. Right. Why did I agree to that? 
So I think that's where yeah. they come in handy. Like before agreeing to do things with other people or for other people, take time to think about how that's going to affect you. I don't know. I could definitely relate to that. And I think yeah. I could use more of it. <laughs> mm-hmm. Same. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the next one is definition. So this one I'm not super clear on, but I, my interpretation is that it describes like your internal like conscience and like needs. I don't know. Because like mine, I have a triple split definition, which says that there are three distinct different voices inside my system. Schizophrenia, basically. Yeah, I was like, oh, three different personalities. <laughs> three? Three's a crowd. I, know, I, I got two and I felt kind of weird about it, but then I saw you had three and I was like, oh, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was like trying to read more and it said like, it's good for me, like people with triple split to be around multiple people to find their right energies to fit with their undefined gates and channels. A lot of this just goes way over my head, um, unfortunately, but. This one, this was one of the ones that I was going to say I wish I could talk to somebody about because I am not fully sure what it means to me and I don't necessarily identify with it as strongly as the other ones. So I feel like maybe Mm -hmm. there's like something that I'm not getting or like a piece that I'm missing because I have the split definition and that means that I should or that I do best processing information um with one other person which maybe it's just my toxic trait i think i do better alone <laughs> i don't really right? like, I'm like like i actually do not want that <laughs> yeah and a group for you just isn't making sense to me like i feel like we both kind mm-hmm. of like to think things through in our own head and process by ourselves before we even bring it to other people but yeah. maybe that's like a blockage that we have and we're holding ourselves back from that and we're just comfortable mm. processing our information by ourselves, but maybe we would actually do better processing it with other people. I'm not sure. But yeah, I was kind of confused about that one too. We're learning as we go. We are. That's we one are. thing about this, about the human design is that it's not like educationally accessible. I don't know. Like it's a difficult thing to like understand on your own and you have to do like a lot of research if you don't want to like spend money to get all the explanations but I know even on the website that I got my results on I was like trying to click through and find more information and then I'd click on something it'd give me like a little summary and then I'd want to learn more and click like learn more and then it'd be like okay for $50 you can learn more I'm like well girl then let me figure it out (laughs) literally I'm like okay I've kept seeing articles from goop I was like perfect Gwyneth has my back Uh (laughs) uh-huh and we trust Gwyneth (laughs) we trust Gwyneth and her bone broth lunch (laughs) and her her vagina Mm. candle did you see that (laughs) yes I did see that be for real Mm. (laughs) okay the next one is your profile which I think is like another main one that's kind of the vibe that I was getting Um, and there's a lot of different combinations that you can have. Combinations, right. Um, okay, so mine is a 4-6, which on the website was called a regal authority figure. And then in my other research, it was called an opportunist role model. So I don't know. Either works. I'm just going to call it a 4-6. Um, but it's mm-hmm. break- your uh, profile is basically broken into two parts. So the 4 for me is the opportunist, which basically means I'm sociable and people tend to be drawn to me easily so they say Mm -hmm. um and I get my opportunities from others and from like the connections and the contacts that I make but it did say that it's not like a social climbing like using people kind of thing because that will not benefit you if you are an opportunist you have to make genuine connections for them to repay you so I mean that's a nice little reminder um right I don't know if I'd necessarily view myself that way but that's fun if that's true I'm not sure Um, and then the six is the role model which it's split into three phases of your life so I'm in the first phase which is birth until 30 years old and it basically said one through 30 is all about making mistakes and learning from them which slay that was very reassuring Um, and I didn't really look into the other stages of life because it's not relevant to me right now but I'm in my era of making lots of mistakes, so that's fun. Period. Love it. (laughs) 
Um, so mine, my profile is a six slash two. So the six is role model and the two is hermit. And I, fun fact, I'm on slay. a website, like I don't know, slay. Um, <laughs> a random website. And it says that uh, six twos and four sixes make good friends. Oh, okay. Out. Yes. Period. Confirmed. <laughs> <laughs> I know this one was like a little bit harder to find information on, but there is a lot of information out there. It's just like I wanted like a quick sentence about what this is, not like my life journey. Um, mm-hmm. So this article that I found said six twos hold high standards for themselves and others. They usually set big goals using their values and ideals as their compass to set their target for what they want to achieve. When a 6-2 is thriving, they're able to maintain a healthy sense of possibility. If... um. Six twos had a not self theme, it would be extreme pessimism and burnout. And I don't know. I feel like this this isn't super detailed, but it's also because I wasn't looking for extreme details. But I feel like this like definitely fits me. And yeah, burnout is definitely my uh, my not self. So I w- I think that's accurate for you. <laughs> yeah, something about the the two being a hermit. I'm like yeah, that's how I describe myself. Uh huh. You have the duality. You have the your first one is yeah. role model, right? Yeah. So you're mm-hmm. like setting the example, doing what you got to do, and then at the end of the day, you're like, "But let me get in my bed." <laughs> yeah, but I'm quiet about it. <laughs> yes, you're making moves in silence. <laughs> exactly. That's one thing I'm doing is making moves in silence. And it also <laughs> this uh, website, <laughs> the website I'm on is in interiorcreature.com, but they have like famous people for years. So some people that are six twos are Barack Obama. Uh, Marilyn Ooh. Monroe, Jamie Lee Curtis, Elton John. So, what a lineup! On, Can twins. you find mine? Yes, my. Let's see who I am. Let's see the fact that Barack Obama and Jamie Lee Curtis are the same, or just it's sending <laughs> me. <laughs> okay, let's see what yours says. Um, the Dalai Lama, Brad Pitt, um, both Prince Charles and uh, <laughs> Camila Bowles. Bowles. Um, Drew Barrymore, Bill Gates, Bob Dylan. Okay. Yeah, good ones. yeah, quite the lineup again. Okay. Yeah. Look at you. Okay. The next one is the one I was talking about earlier that I don't really understand. It's the Incarnation Cross. Um, so my one is the right angle cross of the Sleeping Phoenix. And that's just like above my pay grade. Like I don't really understand. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't really know what it means, but this one said the cross represents an intricate mix of power, the present moment, sexuality, and spirit. So, I mean, hey, I got it all. I don't know what to say. Love that. It also said that I might thrive in roles that allow me to harness my power, stay present, create deep connections, and explore my spiritual nature. So I guess that's something to keep in mind. Yeah. Um, mine is a left angle cross of dominion. I like genuinely have no effing clue what this means. And mm. I just, I can't, I don't, I'm not understanding. Yeah. Well, let's not spread false information. So yeah. We'll <laughs> as just, as we're yeah. spreading false information this whole episode. You know <laughs> Literally what we're talking about, about. <laughs> <laughs> The next one is our not self theme, and I believe we both have the same one, which mm-hmm. is frustration. So this, I think, is also kind of an easy one to understand. It it's like what you're like when you're not. It, I don't know how to explain it. It's like you're like it's so easy to understand. It just it, it's oh, so oh, easy oh. to understand. It's just <laughs> this is what it is. It's like <laughs> you're not self theme, like who you are when you're like not yourself, or like what when causes you to not feel yourself. Yeah, what mm-hmm. causes you to feel like you're not thriving? So ours is frustration. Um, when this type is not following their strategy, they feel stuck, angry at themselves and or the world, and they often direct their energy towards self destruction. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's fun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and that's that one. I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> yeah, I feel like I relate to this heavily. I don't know about you, but yeah. I feel like my go-to emotion is frustration. Sometimes at myself, sometimes projected towards others. But mm-hmm. if things aren't going my way, if I don't feel like I'm doing the right things, I don't know. Just my first negative emotion that I go to is just feeling like extremely frustrated and stuck and yeah. just 
mad at myself most of the time. <laughs> no, I, I feel that 100%. Um, okay, the next one was di- digestion, which I don't know if this is deeper than surface level, but everything that I found was like literally about your digestive system. Oh, same. Um, and mine yeah, is not okay. accurate. Yeah, mine mine actually is accurate, but I've fought against it, and so now it's no longer accurate. But my digestion is buzzing, which means I find it difficult to, like, sit down and eat a meal, like, and not be distracted right. and not be on my phone or doing something else or driving or talking on the phone or whatever it may be, Um, which that is true. I feel like that's my normal instinct is to, like, eat while doing something. Like, it's hard for me to just sit down and focus and make it through a whole meal but through like intuitive eating and all of that um I force myself to actually focus on food when I'm eating it and not be distracted so that's good yeah what was yours um mine is closed taste and it says people with closed digestion have a consistent and stable appetite with regular meals and few digestive disturbances Hmm. And I can just tell you right now with my IBS, there are many digestive disturbances like every day. I mean, when Madison asked Laura what her least favorite thing about me was, she literally said that I get stomach aches too often. <laughs> Which is so mean. So, I know. Just when you put it that so, way, at the time it was funny, but thinking about it now, she's like, you have tummy <laughs> issues. She's you like, suck you have tummy it. issues and it affects our lives together. And I'm like, I'm so sorry. But it is true. I have Dude. horrible stomach issues. So this one, unfortunately, is just like not hitting home for me. But it's okay. And hey, maybe you, <laughs> maybe when you're thriving and you've reached peak generator. Oh, yeah. And your, maybe will, your body maybe is, is calm. You feel secure. Maybe that would help. I don't know. Yeah. I guess I've never been calmer or secure in my life. But <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, I mean, my my issues were going away for a while, and now they're they're back and better than ever. Uh-huh. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. That sucks. It's all good. It's okay. Uh, the next one is your strongest sense, and I have feeling. What did you have? I had touch. Oh, okay. What did it say um, about yours? So for feeling, it says... Uh, The design sense feeling in human design is characterized by an individual's deep attunement to emotional and energetic sensations. This sense is about understanding and navigating the world based on emotional states, both their own and those of others. It may include an intuitive sense of people's emotions or the emotional temperature of a situation, guiding these individuals in their interactions and decisions. I 100% feel like I relate to this. Mm -hmm. I feel like I've always been kind of like an energy person. I can just like, I just, I don't know experience the world based on like what energy I'm receiving from someone or like picking up on what they're feeling. I'm sure many people relate to that. But even like in in an actual like paranormal sense, I've always felt like I can feel no, that's stupid. But like <laughs> I was gonna say like when I've gone on like been in like haunted places, like sometimes I I swear I can like feel what they feel, what the uh-huh. ghosts feel. I'm not psychic or anything, but I know. Maybe you are. Maybe. It's just untapped. Mm Mm-hmm. Because I don't have any of that. Like, I would not know any paranormal stuff. I'm like, there could be a ghost sitting right next to me, and I do not know he's there. So, I don't know. Um, Hmm. But, yeah, mine was touch, which I think it goes both ways, like, positive and negative, because my love language is physical touch and so that makes sense it checks Mm -hmm. out for me but it also said like um it can go the other way like you can touch someone and you can know that they're not good for you like you can pick up on it through touching them instead of just like feeling their energy um or even it said like feeling clothes before you put them on and it's so funny because I do that I think I'm just sensitive to touch whether it be good or bad like I'll feel something and be like ew no or like textures of food or things like that so i thought it was interesting i definitely related to it that is so interesting yeah i feel like this was maybe one of our strongest things that we related to that just like felt like they hit the nail on the head Mm -hmm. and the last one is like probably my favorite i i snuck a peek at yours too and i i don't know if i feel like yours makes sense for you but i don't know if you agree Mm -hmm. so for the last thing it's your environment And I got caves, so Mm. places where you can choose who you're around, such as your home, 
or social settings you have some control over. So I think this is like environments that you like thrive in. And I am defo a homebody. Like I love to be alone and just like cocoon in my safe space, whatever that may be. Um, that's when I feel like my best. So that makes sense. Um, mine is markets, which is funny because I love the farmers market. And it said she it like does. Yeah, it said it's like literally talking about markets. Like it goes beyond yeah, like, that, but like of a, a market scenario that you think of is like what they're talking about. Um, mm-hmm. and it said that we thrive in spaces that are comforting, but also stimulating. So I took that as like familiar, but a little bit out of your comfort zone, which for me is the yeah. farmer's market. Like I go there every week. Mm-hmm. I love it. It's like a comforting, safe space for me, but there's always new people. There's always new like yeah. vendors, new things going on. Um, so yeah, I said like working from home or from a cubicle will not be for me I need to be in like a ever-changing environment which I think also checks out because I don't like working from home I always have to go like to a coffee shop and I always Mm -hmm. like to try new coffee shops which it's like again familiar but out of my comfort zone. yeah so I thought that was a fun one and it also all of these honestly reminded me I know I've mentioned in episodes past that like I always thought I was an introvert and now I think I'm more of an introverted extrovert which Mm -hmm. all of these like showed me that I am more extroverted than I think I am and yeah it was just nice to see that like I'm not crazy in thinking that and I actually do receive more energy from other people and like new situations than I previously thought that I did I love that no I'm Mm -hmm. like wait can I use this as like proof to HR for me to be able to work remotely Full time because my env- my human design environment is cave. So unfortunately, <laughs> like for me to produce my best work, I do have to be at home. Thank you. I, I literally did see though when I was looking into it, like big companies do use it, like That's so to get cool. to know their employees better, or, like know what works for them. I don't know. I saw things about like mm-hmm. different seminars or like Google or whatever will like make all their employees do this. So I think you should start it. Of course, yeah, yeah. Period. Proof is in the pudding. Um, the proof is in the pudding. It always is. Yeah, those were our charts. If you girlies... Are we done? I think we're done. You guys should do your chart too and we can talk about it because yeah, I feel like I go through this with every um, like astrology or personality type thing. Once I figure out what mine is, I want to know what everybody else's is. Mm-hmm. Like, I want to find out... Uh, first of all, I'm doing Ben's chart right after we stop recording this (laughs) i also want to know like my parents my brother all my friends i'm like so are you uh oh you're a generator yep that makes sense (laughs) yeah no i i I find this so interesting i'm most curious about people's strongest sense and environment just because i feel like that's the easiest to understand but (laughs) i feel like those are like so telling like you you don't have to know someone super deeply i think to to kind of get it yeah i feel like some of the other ones are super telling like the the not self and whatnot but those are like Mm -hmm. more personal but i think even like acquaintances it would just be good to know their strongest feeling and the environment that they thrive in like surface level but also very telling for individuals well this was fun i feel like i i know you better than ever i know we're just getting closer every episode truly every episode (laughs) (laughs) But y'all should really get in involved in our Geneva group chat. If you don't know, Geneva is like an app where you can join different group chats like around the country. And we had we have one started for band practice for this podcast. And we have some cutie girls in there, but all are welcome. We'll have it linked down below and maybe we can all chat about our human design charts. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I love the people. People were talking about some big, big goals, big life changes Mm -hmm. that are happening after our manifesting episode and it was just it was fun to see so definitely join get involved make some friends meet the barbies and yeah it's a good time and while you're at it you can follow us on our social media at bandpractice.podcast yes um we're on youtube uh tiktok threads instagram pinterest is that it 
I, it doesn't seem like that many. I don't even that, know that anymore. That Norm, normally, it feels like the list goes on forever, but I guess that's not that bad. We're just and getting we both, used to it. Like, and we both make blogs on YouTube if you want to check those out to kind of like get to know more of our like day to day lives. But yeah, we can really hang out with you anywhere. We're we're everywhere. We are <laughs> chronically online. So we are everywhere all at once every day. So <laughs> you can find us exactly. at any time on <laughs> one of those. <laughs> Not any time. Her Madison's bedtime is nine PM, but any time before that. Yeah. I'll be logged <laughs> off. Nine PM sharp. <laughs> That's all for today. We love you guys yeah. so much. Thank you for listening and we'll see you next week. Bye girlies. We'll see ya. Kisses. <laughs>